Listen, if you saw season one of you more than once, I, I don't know why you did that, but I'm pretty sure that if you love that season, you're going to love this movie. For others, they may see this as the visual manifestation of chlamydia, but here's the thing. I'm used to there being a new Fatal Attraction every year. You know, they may change up who's the one being obsessed. They can swap races, genders, they completely just drop logic also. But these movies are literally meant for you to get riled up. They're orchestrated for you to yell at the screen with all the goofiness. Yeah. And you're right. You're arguing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would never watch it. And, and once you do that, that means you care. Yep. Do you know what I mean? Once you talk to the theater screen... Or talk to your friend that's in the movie like, yo, they tripping, man. You would never, yeah. you, you're in. Yeah. I'm telling you, the director is completely right. Because I had a lot to say to the screen. Let me explain. So the movie starts off with Scott and Annie searching for a new house. He's in advertisement. She writes articles. And they decide to check out Dennis Quaid's house, who the ringer theorized might be Dennis playing the same dad from the parent trap for some reason. The ringer. A real article. Hey, y'all making fun of explained videos on YouTube. Problem here is that, believe it or not, Dennis Quaid might actually be crazy and still obsessed with the house. And the problem with that is that when you realize that this is the house this couple is buying to start a family in, then things get serious. Like, this isn't a lease. This isn't some week-long Airbnb, the getaway cottage. Nah, this is supposed to be the big one where they're living the rest of their years in. And then Dennis Quaid shows up the day after tomorrow like he still owns it. Uh? Now Scott realizes right away that something's up with Charlie. Like, he doesn't just have nice eyes. Dude uses his peripherals to know what's going on. And he realizes that, yo, if someone looks like Dennis Quaid or Mel Gibson, you gotta install extra security. Thing is, this dude installed big security lights without any cameras and maybe he did but this dude had him facing the sky because charlie's still outside prancing around the lawn in the middle of the night when scott confronts charlie about it charlie just pays some whippersnappers to come scope out the place so he doesn't look as guilty meanwhile he's chilling just dark nighting it like my man you're making a lot of money invest in a nest scott then goes for a jog and i I kid you not, he gets run off the road by Charlie. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Dead to Me, which not only has a similar premise that's going on here, but it is the best show on Netflix right now. One that Scott should have watched to learn some things. He ends up in the hospital and for whatever reason, his own wife's like, yeah, um, I'm gonna go sleep back home at the Serta. And surprise, Dennis ain't no rookie. He's waiting outside with a bottle of wine, exclaiming this place can be yours, mine, and ours. And she lets him in. I'm gonna get to Annie in a second. Scott, who's alone in the hospital during visiting hours, texts his friend Marshall the Gronk Mathers to go check on Annie, and Charlie just straight up kills him with an axe. I don't know what in the Paul Bunyan was going on here, but that's when we finally get the reveal that Dennis is in fact a lunatic. He's crazy. Obviously, his wife didn't die of cancer like he claimed she did. She actually committed suicide, according to the police report. But then it turns out he staged that suicide because she wanted to divorce him. And instead of listening to Anthony Jeselnik, he shot her and staged the whole thing. You are allowed to murder your spouse as long as you just kill yourself immediately afterwards. <laughs> then there's nothing they can do. It's even Steven. You're above the law. Charlie's daughter obviously d -d -d dips and tells Scott that she changed her name after moving away so that her dad couldn't find her. And it turns out that the only reason he was selling the house was because he had gotten in so much debt with his company that he had no choice. But because he's so attached to the house, he decides, you know what? Yeah, I I'm gonna just take it back, take this man's wife, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have all the right stuff. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. And I don't know how this lady couldn't see that something was up with Quaid, considering the uh, the man acts like a broken muffler. Like, time after time, this guy pops up like a jump scare, and he's just like, Oh, uh, Charlie, come on in. Charlie is twitching like he's working with a jackhammer. This dude's sweating indoors and Annie's just like you want a lemonade for those who don't remember what her part was in Shazam uh I started questioning whether it was just the same character because she mentally was making those same decisions because Anne Annie Antoinette this man was sniffing you like he was radiating pheromones it turns out this guy has an entire room below the house they knew nothing about this room even had stairs that led up to the creaking closet that they never bothered to check and Thus gave him the best vantage point. Like if I'm moving into a house that's this big, I'm checking every nook and cranny and hiring someone to do feng shui. But listen, guys, 
gals, otherwise, when I say there is a scene where this man spies on Annie taking a shower, and instead of just being a peeping Tom like he is in this shot fully clothed, I, I kid you not, he decides to also take off his shirt and be butt naked. Watching her. Like, I remember being back in Wisconsin Dells. I don't know how many people have gone through this, but sometimes you see a man come in and use the urinal by, by, by getting butt naked, just takes everything off. When I saw that, I felt violated. Imagine this man being right outside her bathroom. This is the goofiest, yet most psychotic performance I've ever seen. I'm not even mad. To be honest, I want to know what the hell he was reading to get into this headspace. Like, what side of YouTube was Dennis on that he was there just trying to imitate that craziness? Then again, maybe it was just Dennis. He just read the script and he's like, I, I understand this completely. There's a shot where he imitates Jack Torrance. He uh, he growls at one point. Like, I don't know how many remember the growl from Beauty and the Beast. How would you feel about growing a beard? <laughs> he, he did that. Obviously, the budget runs out by the end and the credits roll before the police can even get to the scene. But it's implied that Charlie has been shot dead and Annie and Scott get to live happily ever after in their house where now two people have been shot and killed. Thank you guys for checking out this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Did you like this movie? Did you not? Which of this genre that keeps on growing is your favorite? Uh, I'm curious to know <laughs> what you thought the most insane part of this movie was. Like, I almost kind of recommend this movie as a rent it. I, I think I, I said I had it as a stream. It's a stream it, but it's almost worth the rent it if you got like some drinks and you're watching it with your crew. Cause there is a point by the end of this movie, I kid you not, Dennis Quaid licks her like seeing that on the screen is one thing but imagining being on set where Dennis Quaid has to lick you is insane I would never be an actor you know what I love just watching movies for a living you know what forget my dream of being a director I don't need to be an actor that there's some crazy stuff out there uh let me know your thoughts down below on this movie on any other ones you want me to cover don't forget to comment like and subscribe and Charlie won't lick your cheeks